Claude Breeden. I'm president of the Judaica Library Network of Metropolitan Chicago, and I want to welcome all of you, uh, JLNMC, the Association of Jewish Libraries, Tri-Faith members, and friends. JLNMC offers support and education through in-person and online <clears throat> programs, networking, and mentoring related to Jewish libraries. And we're a chapter of AJL, the National Association of Jewish Libraries. This is the final JLNMC program of the 2021-2022 year. The common thread of all of JLNMC's programs this past year has been being unique. From the Autumns, Chicago's unique Pritzker Military Museum and Library, presented by JLNMC past president and Pritzker oral history librarian, Leah Cohn, to Best Jewish Fiction and Nonfiction of 2021, presented by JLNMC and AJL member Rachel Kanan, with a look at organizing a Jewish book club using such books by librarian Debbie Steinberg, to today's program, which features the unique and award-winning Tri-Faith Initiative in Omaha, Nebraska. Tri-Faith is a 38-acre campus with a synagogue, church, mosque, and interfaith center. Each has its own distinctive congregation with libraries who share programming and special projects. After the presentation, there will be an opportunity for questions and discussions. And now I'd like to welcome the Tri-Faith leaders and librarians. Thank you, Shelley, for inviting us to share our story with you and your Chicago and National Jewish Libraries community. Welcome also to Friends, the Omaha Temple Israel and Tri-Faith community. Shalom, Salam, peace. I am Lee Needleman, a super fan of Tri-Faith and an instigator of the Tri-Faith Library. I was invited to talk to you about Omaha's Tri-Faith Initiative and our developing Tri-Faith Library and Omaha's Temple Israel's Library. We thought it might be fun to begin by telling those of you who are Metropolitan Chicago folks a little about Omaha where it is on the map and what has put it on the map. Omaha is in the center of the country located at the staple in the map book, if you remember those. Omaha is a city on the eastern edge of the state of Nebraska on the Missouri River close to the Iowa border. Omaha is known for its pioneer history, a stop in the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail. Today, it has many museums and cultural centers, including the ever-growing and stunning Joslyn Art Museum and the Henry, Henry Dordley Zoo with an indoor jungle, rainforest, and desert habitats. You might know that Warren Buffett is from Omaha. Omaha is also the birthplace of Malcolm X, Gerald Ford, Fred Astaire, and many others. One person of note to this library book group was a rabbi in Omaha's conservative synagogue, Beth El, from 1946 to 1975. His name was Rabbi Meyer Kripke, Zikrono Livercha, may his memory be a blessing. He was a friend of Warren Buffett and an early investor in Buffett's company, Berkshire Hathaway. In the rabbi's retirement, he continued to teach and serve, and he was a noted philanthropist. And here is the connection for this audience. Rabbi Kripke endowed the Kripke National Jewish Book Award for Education and Jewish Identity in memory of his wife, Dorothy. Rabbi Kripke passed away at 100 years of age in 2014. Check the link in the chat uh, for more about Rabbi Kripke's involvement with Jewish family literacy. Omaha has about 5,000 Jewish households, which include Reform, Conservative, and Orthodox Jews. Our 150-year-old Reform Jewish synagogue, Temple Israel, 
is proud to keep active connections with the Jewish community. Following 9-11, Temple Israel realized it needed to make connections outside of our Jewish community to develop understanding of the other Abrahamic faiths. Temple Israel made an amazing commitment to an innovative tri-faith relationship. And we built our new synagogue on shared land with a mosque, the American Muslim Institute, AMI, and a church, Countryside Community Church. These three faith communities wished to build and maintain their own buildings, continuing their own religions, teachings, and worship practices. We wanted each other as neighbors to meet with and learn from and to develop desired connections of friendship and understanding. To fulfill this desire and make it a reality, we bought 35 acres of land together from a former Jewish country club. Temple Israel was founded in 1871 in Omaha. Temple Israel was the first of the Tri-Faith Initiative to build on the Tri-Faith Commons, dedicating its new synagogue in October of 2013. Temple Israel currently has nearly 700 family unit members. The American Muslim Institute, AMI, was founded in 2006, finishing and opening its building on the Tri-Faith Commons in 2017. It has a congregation of 400 families that include over 40 nationalities from all continents. All of the prayers are offered in Arabic while their sermon is in English. Countryside Community Church was founded in Omaha in 1949 and is part of the United Church of Christ, the oldest denomination in the United States. Construction for their new building on the Tri-Faith Commons began in 2017 and the new church building opened in 2019. The Tri-Faith Center, the fourth building on our Tri-Faith camp campus serves as a hub for social events and educational activities and gatherings to bring our Tri-Faith diverse people together to study and interact, welcoming people of all faiths, serving as a model for peaceful coexistence. The Tri-Faith Center was not yet built when we started our work on the Tri-Faith Library. The building opened early in the pandemic in the summer of 2020. Our four buildings circle natural wetlands. We are connected to all our buildings by a circular bridge, Abraham's Bridge, which transverses the natural flowing water called Hell's Creek that separates us. The creek was called Hell's Creek because early farmers coped with flooding there. The name stuck as Hell's Creek or sometimes Hell Creek when it was part of the Jewish country club that occupied the land before the Tri-Faith Initiative was conceived. Jews were not allowed in other private country clubs before they built this one on the land now occupied by the Tri-Faith Initiative partners. And now they are part of a shared land that purposely encourages welcoming the other by co-locating our places of worship and community with people and congregations of other faiths. This is Tri-Faith in Omaha, Nebraska. The Tri-Faith Initiative has produced an excellent video which includes the inspirational thoughts of the founders and leaders of this amazing organization. If the video brings forth questions or comments for you, please feel free to put them in the chat. We can address them later. The video is seven minutes and we will view it now. Three faith communities in Omaha, Nebraska took a shot at trying to be friends with one another. To learn how to find mutual respect with people who are similar to us and people who are different. To do something that is uh, 
outrageous. Try faith. Try faith. Try faith. Try faith is an opportunity to change the landscape of religious life in the 21st century. A new model. Try faith is courage. That becomes the new norm. Try faith is. Try faith is the change that you want to see in the world. The response of a call for the three children of Abraham to come back together. An effort to consciously co-locate. A great satisfaction. An amazing project in Omaha, Nebraska. With anxiety. Try faith for me is just the sensible thing to do. It's the attempt to bring religious groups together that have traditionally had enmity for one another. A slice of the kind of world that I would like to live in. September 11th, Rabbi Ari Azrael formed a circle around the mosque in the area to form a protective barrier. We realized that we shouldn't just come together in moments of um, hardship or trauma or sorrow. We should come together in everyday moments. We should be part of one another's lives in a really profound way. And the only way to really do that is to co-locate. Bringing Temple Israel the American Muslim Institute and Countryside Community Church here to a common campus. Three communities who believe very different things. We worship the same God, but, but, but in three very different expressions who historically have said because of those differences, um, we can't get along. It's three faiths coming together, uh, not to blend faiths or to, um, to dilute who we are as individual faith communities to show that these three faiths have more things in common than they have differences. To me, the most important issue is not in changing anyone's mind, but simply in opening ours. There will be no proselytizing. Everyone will be practicing his and her own uh, uh, beautiful faith. Everyone who has chosen to spend some time working together on this, getting to know people of the other faith, uh, has come away a better person for it, more grounded in their own faith. I'm a better Muslim today. I'm a better human being. I'm a better leader. One of the things that I've gained most by being involved in Tri-Faith for 10 years is a truer sense of who I am as a Jew. The idea is for people who are Jewish, people who are Christian, people who are Muslim, will worship on this property and get to know one another as neighbors would get to know one another. And we would hope that, that those kinds of relationships then would foster peace. The physical nature of Tri-Faith is a 35-acre plot of land. There are four buildings that are on the property, one for each of the faith communities and then one for the tri-faith community itself that is envisioned as a welcome center. And for those that, that may be hesitant to go to a mosque or go to a synagogue or go to a church, start at the tri-faith building. I'd like it to be a place where people come to learn. The central iconic portion of the commons will be the bridge. Just like in your own neighborhood where you have streets and walkways that connect one another, the bridge will be that connecting point. I would love to see one day that another Tri-Faith campus pops up in, in, in Europe, in the Middle East, in, in South Asia, and doesn't matter where. But what's more important and that is to see people come together. When we make statements like, well, we sh in polite company, you shouldn't talk about religion or politics, I think what we're saying is then we can't have the rich relationships that are real. Diversity is not a problem here. It's an actual goal. And all of us in our scriptures, in our holy writings, have difficult texts. This is where I would like to start the conversation. It's not an issue that we have disagreements. How do we work together to work through those disagreements? We're going to set a model and live by example in a way that our children will just say, oh yeah, well, why would you ever be separated? Look at me, I'm smiling finally. I'm, I'm, I'm happy too. I'm, uh... Who are the Muslim folks? Who are the Jewish folks? Well, they're our neighbors. Being involved with Tri-Faith feels really revolutionary, but I hope it's not. I hope it's normal because getting along with other people is natural and normal. My heart is so full being the mother of a young black girl in America. 
oh, like I can't even put any more words to it, but this is so representative of just that, just, just respectful, accepting friendship. I'm Roman Catholic, I grew up Catholic, um, but I married a Muslim, so my kids are Muslim, um, and they're afraid to tell people they're Muslim. We're exposing Gideon to people of the Islamic and the Christian faith very early, and I think our main hope is for him to meet people and create lifelong friends. This initiative is going to bring that kind of a value to us, to our kids, so they can grow up to be a good human being, not just good Christian Jews or Muslims. It meant the world to me that my friends were there at my son's bar mitzvah, um, and of all different faiths were there. That really did mean a lot to me, guys. That um, up. <laughs> I was always literally to become light to the world. I, I want us to become first candle to Omaha. People are getting to know each other and building respect and occasionally even trust. And if we can have dozens and hundreds and eventually thousands of those relationships, that to me would be the biggest success. When we get too discouraged about can these faiths ever uh, find peace that you realize, well, shoot, they're, they're finding peace in Omaha, <laughs> Nebraska. Maybe there is hope for us where, wherever we are. Blessed be the peacemakers and May God bless all the efforts advancing this uh, uh, caravan of peace. faith communities in Omaha. Okay. Thank you. To dare to repeat what I said before, this is Tri-Faith in Omaha, Nebraska. Who am I to be giving you this presentation and to be working on a Tri-Faith library? I am not a librarian, but I am passionate about books. As an adult, for as long as I can remember, I have been a member of two book clubs at the same time. Books have always been an important part of my life. And for over 25 years, I have been passionate about interfaith connections. I have been active in many interfaith opportunities. I worked with interfaith families by helping lead meetings of reform Jewish outreach programs, conversations with couples where one member was not born Jewish at our temple Israel. I experienced my own journey to conversion to Judaism. Shortly thereafter, I was able to offer programs for other new converts by becoming a Reform Conversion Fellow through Hebrew Union College in Cincinnati. I became an adult bat mitzvah. I was involved with Project Interfaith to bring people of different faiths together. After 9-11, I also worked with an interfaith group called the Women of Spirit. We planned an annual day of spirituality for unchurched women to share and experience stories from women of other faith backgrounds. This led me to lifelong friends called the Hotties. We Hotties get together monthly to this day. I joined an interfaith book club over 13 years ago here in Omaha. We read and discuss books about different religions. We read only 100 pages a month, which makes for lovely in-depth discussions about aspects of varied religions as we learn more through our selected books. We read in this book club, God, a Biography by Jack Miles, and had four months of deep discussion, 100 pages a month for this 400 page book. A link to our interfaith book club list is uh, of compelling interfaith books is in the chat, books we've read so far. Then the Tri-Faith Initiative developed into a reality. Our congregation was now a partner in sharing land and interfaith learning while developing new friendships. I loved this idea and got involved right away. 
I helped lead a tri-faith committee for Temple Israel members to learn about tri-faith and to become active volunteers in its programming. In wishing to continue supporting tri-faith and being a book lover, I became interested in the concept of a tri-faith library. I thought it would be a great addition to our tri-faith community. I decided to investigate this and see what would develop. How did the concept of a tri-faith library evolve? This was a new concept, suggesting many questions. Is there an interest? Where would it be? What would it be? How would tri-faith partners be involved? What do our communities want in a tri-faith library? The tri-faith library is a work in progress. In beginning this project of creating a tri-faith library, I hoped to unearth interest or suggestions regarding this idea or concept. Before the Tri-Faith Center's building was even built, I began a year of interviewing. I spoke with a variety of people in our Tri-Faith community beginning in the fall of 2018 to seek out their thoughts that might show their interests, wishes, and dreams for a Tri-Faith library. In all these interviews, I spoke to only one person at a time. I had no idea how wonderful it would be to hear the thoughtful and creative ideas of not only the outspoken person, but the quiet one as well. And each person had meaningful contributions to share. Their voices were heard. Those interviewed included most of the clergy of the three tri-faith religions, many educators, librarians inside and outside our community, book lovers, friends, and interested members of the Tri-Faith Initiative of different ages. I wrote up the results of those interviews in, in this book, Let's Get Thoughtful About a Tri-Faith Library, a 35 page summary and elevator talk to share everyone's thoughts. You see the cover of the report. The library ideas were developing, ideas that respected each congregation's autonomy. Following this report, I teamed up with Tri-Faith staff to begin the Tri-Faith Library project team with members representing each of the Tri-Faith partners. We developed the next step in a year of figuring things out. The Tri-Faith Library project team members visited the autonomous libraries of the Tri-Faith community, seeing each other's individual buildings, library spaces. The interviews indicated a common willingness to join our libraries together to form a Tri-Faith library. The Tri-Faith library project team proceeded. We met as a group representing each Tri-Faith partner. We wrote up library policies for our shared library. We wrote our Tri-Faith Library mission statement. The Tri-Faith Library builds and enriches the community and deepens understanding by sharing resources and information. Rather than one library at the Tri-Faith Initiative building, we decided that our building's libraries together constitute the Tri-Faith Library. This idea offered another opportunity to get into each other's buildings and to get to know our neighbors. Let's look at the cover of my report again. I don't know if you can see the title of that book there. It's a Jewish joke book. Where would you be likely to find a book on Jewish jokes? At the synagogue. If you want a book on Jewish jokes, go to Temple Israel. These four tri-faith autonomous organizations who decided to collaborate together share the titles of their books through Libib, an internet listing of shared books. I imagine you librarians out there know about Libib. Libib. We downloaded all our Tri-Faith books into a Tri-Faith Libib system. The link is on the slide. As others that are not librarians may be listening to this, let me explain what Libib is. If you want a book, look it up in Tri-Faith Libib and see if any Tri-Faith partner has that book. Go there, visit your neighbor's building, get the book, consider sitting down there for a moment, maybe with a coffee. 
and enjoy the book and perhaps meet one of your neighbors. Check out the book if you like. In our Libib Tri-Faith Library records, Countryside Community Church has 700, I mean, 373 books. Countryside Community Church has a well-organized library that fills a sunny corner looking out on Abraham's Bridge and Temple Israel. There are about 400 books organized alphabetically by author and by Dewey Decimal System. In addition, there is a large collection of DVDs and great course offerings for small group discussions. Some topics include Christian theology, theology, practices and observances, the history of Christianity and Christian denominations, as well as many books about other religions. There is a special section dedicated to the St. John, John's Bible and its extensive artwork. All are welcome to visit Countryside's library. Temple Israel currently has downloaded 2,169 books with a large library room that reflects a history of the synagogue of 150 years. Some of our rare older books reflect this as several were, were published in the mid 1800s. Our Temple Israel Library is now well organized thanks to our, thanks to our Tri Faith Library project team's dedicated volunteers. Thank you all, every one of you. Back at our temple library, we have labels on the shelves and alphabetical organization of books gathered together by topic, such as living a Jewish life, conversion, Jewish holidays, black Jewish concerns, local authors, spirituality, Jewish fiction, folk tales and stories, famous Jewish authors, scripture and prayer, Jewish ethics and law, Agadah, Midrash, Death and Mourning, Hebrew and Yiddish, Dead Sea Scrolls, and so much more. Thank you, Shelley Riskin, for introducing us to these terrific shelf labels, book easels, and other library aids. The Temple Library, in addition, has a book cube in the community court. It has changing shelves of books of interest for adults and children. We display there the current Jewish holidays, particularly for children. Currently, we are displaying Mouse, Volumes 1 and 2, as an example of banned books with an editorial comic about banned books framed and positioned next to our mouse books. We bring our temple library books to this large book cube out in the community court, the spacious, welcoming social room just inside after entering the main door of Temple Israel. Visitors and congregants might enjoy seeing these books while relaxing in a comfortable chair there. The American Muslim Institute, AMI, has a lovely intimate room, a room with a view, set aside with library plans developing, no books yet. We all still have such new buildings. The Tri-Faith Center, which was not yet built when we started the Tri-Faith Library Project, has in Tri-Faith Libib 108 books. The Tri-Faith Center wishes for a modest collection so their smaller building can morph easily into many forms of use. They currently have three moving carts of three shelves each to share their collection. We on the Tri-Faith Library project team will help highlight their collection by offering for their library a selection of five star books of excellent reads that are meaningful and compelling for interfaith reading explorers. The quality and readability of these specially chosen books would inspire the reader to try another five star book after finishing one. One great example of what I'm sure we would all agree on as a five star book would be Abraham Joshua Heschel's The Sabbath. You have a five, you have five star books too. Think about what your five star book would be. Take a moment, please type it in the chat. While you're doing this, I'll show you three more five star books. This book by Houston Smith, 
the world's great religions, gives you a good introduction to the tri-faith religions and many more religions to help your curiosity begin to get even more educated by a wonderful author. This book by Marcus Borg, Meeting Jesus for the First Time, is an excellent modern commentary on Christianity that helps one see this religion in a different light. This book by Karen Armstrong on Muhammad is an excellent introduction to Muhammad and his whole life and beliefs. These are more five-star books that you might see soon in Trifaith Library. I hope you had a chance to write down some five-star books in the chat. The Trifaith Kids Library currently has 81 books and it is housed at Temple Israel. Plus the Libib online system, this Libib record of our books holds it all together. The titles of the combined Trifaith Initiatives autonomous libraries are downloaded by our Trifaith Library volunteers into our online list of shared books. One last little real story about Libib. I would like to tell the story about when Rabbi Azrael asked for the uh, ask about a book, Who Wrote the Bible by Richard Elliott Friedman. He was holding a class at Temple Israel in the adult education room with Zoom equipment in it. Rabbi Azrael sent one of the group to go next door to the Temple Library to find the book. I was in this class on Zoom that day. I looked up the book in Trifaith Libib. The class member who went to the Temple Library to find that book returned and said it wasn't there. I said to the group from my home that the book was not at Temple Israel's library, but that it is at Countryside Community Church. Our online system of Libib was working for us. If you would like to see the book or check it out, you can go visit the library partner who has the book. It bears repeating. Go, open their door and visit that Tri-Faith Neighbors building and see and maybe check out the book. Get to know your neighbors. Hit by COVID, now what could we do? Our Tri-Faith Library group meetings paused. Interested volunteers and I eventually were able to start working in limited numbers wearing our masks at the, tri at the Temple Israel Library, probably in early 2020, as soon as we were able given COVID. Our goal was to download Temple Israel's books into the Libib system. In so doing, we discovered that Temple's library needed more organization if people wish to find the books of interest. Oh no, it was as if the books were scattered everywhere. We ended up spending a lot of time reading, organizing, and labeling Temple's books before we could begin to download the over 2,000 books from Temple Israel into Libib. We have a little video to show you our library at that stage. Here we see from our library window, a quick view of the commons, the tri-faith buildings. Then, then you jump into the room with the boxes of books and post-its everywhere. Temple's library with boxes on the table, boxes on the floor, a scribble of everything as we find our way to organization. The post-it notes were there by us as a beginning attempts at organization. And those books were likely moved elsewhere as the organization was completed. Over the, all the years and the move to the new building, our books, in spite of the years of thoughtful care, had become out of any obvious order. We needed to start anew. We gathered books together by topic and piles around the room. We labeled the piles of post-it notes to know what was in them. We needed to get a fair amount of the same types to begin to shelve them again with a post-it note label. Then we needed to bring those types of books into some kind of order with each other that might make sense. Two of my granddaughters were helping us during this summer of organizing. At times they would pile a whole large category of books onto a tall back chair on wheels and run them to the other side of the room if it made more sense to have them there. Those two granddaughters also copied all the topics from the post-it notes around the room and put these new post-it notes copies 
on the glass wall by the door to get into the library. They spent an afternoon or more trying to organize a sensible way of where everything would go in the room. Our organizational knowledge matured by doing that organizing. We non-librarian book lovers organized this library by grouping the books by the type of the content of the books. Within each type, the books are alphabetized to give order and help in shelving. Overlapping subject areas got placed next to each other. For example, Jewish history bookshelves were followed by Holocaust bookshelves and then by shelves of books on Israel. Beyond the challenges of creating order, the weeding of books also posed challenges with some very old books. Were they archival of enduring value, moldy? Did they have binding problems? Were they of interest to our community? What to do with this collection that goes back 150 years? Jeanette Gabriel, director of the Schwab Center for Israel and Jewish Studies at University of Nebraska at Omaha, shared with us her archival work for Temple Israel including professionally archiving and protecting this book of life records of temple members from long ago. Jeanette came to advise us in the temple library and to help discover and explain older, important, and even rare books. Also, George was a member of temple and a retired librarian who advised us. Matt came over from the Omaha Public Library for a consultation and two other librarians helped with their thoughts in my Let's Get Thoughtful About a Tri-Faith Library report. And of course, your Shelley Riskin came to consult with this group. Some extra challenges were experienced when educators of Temple's youth brought into Temple's library two six-foot tables piled high with books from their religious school and their teaching staff. Our library was full and now we were asked to integrate so much more into our collection. We decided that we did not need the teacher's books, which could be given away to the teacher's personal collections. The children's books we downloaded to Libib. We have kept many of these children's books on our shelves in our library, as well as on additional rolling shelves in a corner of our library and many others out in the community court book cube. We requested larger shelves out in the community court for children's books. This would help children and their families see Temple's children's books collection and more regularly check out books. Now, more about Temple's Israel's library. What does it look like, the space Temple's library? The library is a rectangular room on the top floor of the education wing in the back corner of the building. The library corner room has two walls of windows beautifully overlooking Temple's Amphitheater, the Children's Playground, the Tri-Faith Garden, and the Tri-Faith Commons. Circling the natural wetlands, this is Countryside Community Church, the Tri-Faith Building, and the American Muslim Institute, all within the view from Temple's library. Inside the library, the other two walls have full bookshelves and a computer screen on one wall for meeting use. The chairs there are sofa-like and comfortable, by that computer screen, among other things, we watch TED Talks and discuss them afterwards. Teachers often use this library room for classes. The rest of the library has a variety of chairs and tables, including an eight chaired conference table and smaller table arrangements. There is a counter by the corners windows with tall chairs. Altogether, a variety of well-placed furniture organizes the library space. This room with a view constitutes the main space of the Temple, Temple Israel Library. There are two other spaces for our library books at Temple. First, the book cube in the community court, which I already mentioned and described. Our last library space is in the adult education room adjacent to Temple's library. Torah study takes place in this room every Saturday morning. Our library had several different intriguing Torah commentaries to peruse. We brought them into this adult education room so that people there, particularly for Torah study, could have easy access to a variety of scholars of Torah commentaries. Those Torah commentaries include classic and modern commentaries of Gunter Plaut, women's commentaries, 
Samuel, Raphael, Hirsch, and Naoma Leibowitz, among others. Back to the main Temple Israel Library and the rectangular room at the back corner of Temple Israel. Better usable organization has been developed by the Tri-Faith Library Project Team, organizing Temple's books by type of books and labeling each shelf makes it easier to find the categories of books of interest. We have written down the organization of our Temple Israel Library so books could be more easily found and shelved again once they were perused or checked out. The sheet labeled Temple Israel Omaha Library, new organization, spring 2022, will be available to library visitors in the Temple Library and on the book cube in the community court. The link is available to you in the chat, Temple Israel Omaha Library, new organization, spring 2022. Briefly, I'll tell you a little more how this organization is introduced in this document. The, introduce, the introduction of the current organization of books has highlights. The labeled book collections donated by beloved former Rabbi Brooks and Richard M. Goldsteins just got, got integrated into the total library by topic like the rest of the books, rather than being segregated within their own collection space, desiring to use them more by making them easier to find with others of like kind. The front of the room books were chosen for visual and topical interest for people coming into the library for a meeting that requires the wall computer, like a group enjoying a TED talk or other meeting. And all the books are organized, like I said before, in alphabetical order by the author's last name or by topic. The shelves are now labeled by content. We have a lot more detail on exactly what is on the other shelves, but you could look that up if you're interested as the link is in the chat. Or, or you could write your questions in the chat. To continue, we have downloaded our books into Libib. Temple Israel's library now has a better order for its books. We need to help the Tri-Faith Initiative Building's library get five-star books. We will offer our help to the creation of AMI's library when they are ready. What is next? Let's go back to my 35 page report, let's get thoughtful about a tri-faith library. Just for a moment, back to all that brainstorming, brainstorming that awakens us to thoughtful ideas and dreams. Here we have interested tri-faith members of different religions giving their creative thoughts about what they could imagine in a tri-faith library. These could be ideas we use as the tri-faith library concept matures. We may choose to add some of the many dreams that came up in these interviews, including the following. We need a meeting place with coffee or coffee close by. This is the most request, uh, repeated request. The library would be a center of books for other faiths, future forward with internet. We need to have interdisciplinary sources for interfaith cooperation. Some people don't read, have interfaith games, novels, and movies that could be checked out. A smorgasbord is interesting and tasty. Smart to make it mobile. Roll your mobile shelves to events where the presentation makes it more fun, more interesting. A new library focused on interfaith literature. Consider a media library. Include podcasts and personal interviews you care about, thus gaining access to the greatest speakers in the world this way. Reading on Kindles is appreciated. Have digital copies available. DVDs have great courses, and this could be a place where people could check one out. A group could meet at the Tri-Faith Initiative or any of our buildings to watch a video. Documentaries from PBS, Netflix, other streaming sites, and more that you can pull up and watch. With just earphones, we would enjoy listening pods to listen to the music of the different faiths through MP3s. Music is more than religious, it is also cultural. This can get you past your discomfort in dealing with different faiths, whatever gets you in. Cookbooks of different faiths, children's books, a comic book section, graphic books from different faiths, travel books, the art of different faiths, a coffee bar, a wall fireplace, nice comfortable chairs with rugs to make the place look warm and inviting, have plants, have picture books for kids, stuffed animals, maybe a tri-faith library dog to make it welcoming. 
make it a library day. These were just some of the answers to just one of the 12 questions in my report. I think we will find inspiration here to go forward. We hope members of TriFaith guests in our community may find themselves in one of our buildings growing libraries, wishing to explore the possibilities. They may choose a book and sit in a comfy chair by a table where they can put their coffee cup. On the other side of the table is an empty chair waiting for another TriFaith book explorer to come sit and start a conversation. Thank you for welcoming us to share our story. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lee. Uh, I have to say, I uh, had the opportunity to visit uh, TriFaith campus last uh, autumn when I was there uh, visiting Temple Israel. And uh, it is just unbelievably impressive in person. Uh, but uh, I think that Lee did a great job of giving us a little bit of a taste of um, what TriFaith is all about, how you all keep your own autonomy, but work together. Uh, and, uh, and also just the really, really wonderful uh, you know, idea that has come to fruition. Uh, when I saw TriFaith in action, I said, more people have to learn about this. Uh, and so uh, thank you so much. And it was an honor to consult with you and to help you in any way that I could. And I hope to continue to do that. Um, and now, of course, and of course, all those ideas, I mean, you're going to have plenty to keep you busy <laughs> in the coming years. Uh, so now I think we are ready for any um, questions that you have. So there's a few ways, of course, with Zoom. Uh, that you can um, do that if you have a question or a comment. Um, you can either raise your hand by using at the bottom of the screen, of your screen, shouldn't there be a reactions? Jeremy, are you running the Zoom? It you depends on your device that you're using. Oh, thank so you. look at different places for something like reactions. Okay, reactions where it says uh, raise hand. Thank you, Karen. Oh, our other tech uh, whiz, uh, which I'm not. So you can either uh, re reactions, raise your hand uh, so that I can see who uh, would like to ask a question and then you would unmute yourself. Uh, the other thing that you can do, of course, is type your question in the chat and I will read it. So um, if there are any questions or comments right now, please feel free to do either one of those. And I, and I hope to be able to see who might have their hand raised. Um, I, don't, I don't have, oh, there it is. There's the reactions button. Um, okay. So why don't we start with, Let's see, I thought there was a question in the chat. Anybody have anything they'd like to say? Molly has a question in the chat. Um, what are you personally most excited about for the future of the TriFaith Library? My vote goes for TriFaith Dog. <laughs> I had to put that in. Maybe we could have a, a dog day and have a puppy play date in a library. I don't know how well that would go over, but we could try the comments if that doesn't go over so well. I think that's a really good idea. <laughs> Get our tri-faith buddies together with their puppies. So much fun. Um, I, I think the thing I'm kind of really currently thinking about as being something that might be reachable and also really meaningful would be to get the music to get some kind of ways of hearing our different religions music uh, into our libraries. You know, so you could go hear Christian music at Countryside Community Church, Muslim music at AMI, you know, and Jewish music here, if we could have some way of having something like that. And I think that would be a worthy project to work on. And all the others, I mean, there's so much creativity in my report, which seems so it seems silly in some ways, but it was so exciting to hear people think of lovely things like that. So, yeah, that's, I think I could, we could go to people in these buildings and find people who know the music and see, and some people who know how to present music and see if we can make that work. 
And Lee, as far as the dog goes, I know of some churches that do a blessing of the animals. And uh, of course, there's the Noah Parsha. So maybe you could get the clergy at Temple Israel to do blessing of the animals. And then you'll have, you can introduce uh, your library dog. Just an idea. <laughs> that sounds great. I love it. Um, Okay, people in this room, write down these great ideas. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, I, it looks like Eileen has a question. Eileen Arnold. So, yep. So I know that everyone has put a lot of work into this because obviously I've seen you guys at the library many, many times when I've been at the temple doing other things. And so I wonder how are you going to now get the word out to all the different congregations that, hey, you know, we have this wonderful place. And I say that because there are so many people that don't even realize we have a library in that back room. Um, and I, you know, to me, it's like the most important thing is to somehow get people to know and come in, come in, yeah. you know, to the wonderful space that you all have worked so hard to, to create. So do you have a a plan for that? I, I think that surely is the, the next plan to work on. I think we need to have a grand reopening ceremony for this library now that it's got labels and books here and books out there. And, you know, we need to get involved with the people who do programming at Temple Israel for this and a tri faith initiative as well, because of course it should be a tri faith welcoming as well. And um, cookies, chocolate. I always had chocolate for every time we had volunteers here. Got to have chocolate. See, Kathy is handing me the chocolate I brought today. Um, <laughs> mint creams and chocolate, dark chocolate covered almonds. Yum. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you got to have chocolate uh, and plants and all those other things. But no, you are so totally right. I think we got worn out. And there's still more old books we had to figure out what to do with because they're old. Are they precious? Are they something people will look at? And then if not, what do you do? You know, so we have a lot of questions, but we shouldn't let ourselves drag down with an anchor that we can't quite figure out immediately. We could have an opening and I think that would be lovely. Yeah, it's, a, it's always, libraries are always a work in progress and you could easily get overwhelmed, I think. Um, a, a newsletter, if the Temple Israel lets you do that, something like that, a specific library newsletter, people's favorite books like you just got on the chat. Um, I'd also like to quickly say before we call on Vicki and then Edward that, um, Eileen works in the Tri-Faith Garden and showed me that garden and that was phenomenal. And all the produce from the garden goes to uh, needy uh, organizations who uh, help people that are uh, food challenged and, and need that. So there's just a lot that wasn't even covered uh, for lack of time uh, in this PowerPoint uh, that's pretty amazing. Uh, Vicki, uh, do you have a question or comment? Um, yeah, I do. Um, this year, well, I live in New York, but um, but despite that, um, using the libraries of all three faiths as a as a jumping off point, um, I'm particularly interested in user friendly, age appropriate books and lessons for little kids, especially little kids that don't know about other holidays in other faiths. Um, this year I was asked to do a lesson for one of my grandchildren's pre-K classes where there's a real mixture of languages, religions, backgrounds um, about Passover. And I mean, I wrote to a few friends of mine who I know are very good at in breaking information down and I know it has to be visual for little kids but I'm wondering about the, the three, the, the Tri-Faith um, Initiative in being a resource for anybody who would like to give, let's say a 15 minute lesson to a classroom that teachers would be able to come there and say, you know, my kids know nothing about Ramadan, or my kids know nothing about Passover or about Easter in my class. You know, how can we present something 
what's available to use to present a meaningful lesson, a short lesson, obviously that's age appropriate. I think I'm just thinking out loud because this came up this year for me. Um, this is, you have an excellent question. And I think this is something that our um, director of education and Tri-Faith, I might have his title wrong, Tri-Faith Initiative would be able to answer well. This is Jeremy Fricky. And he knows those things and the resources are amazing. And it's a great question. Thank you. This is Jeremy. Yeah. So, uh, well, oh, yeah. no, it's fine. Just keep yours. In. That's fine. I'll, I'll talk through these. Um, um, we do offer, firstly, all of our uh, book lists are on Libib. So um, we're continuing to fill that out. And as we get more recommendations from uh, religious communities about what does the best to represent um, their traditions. Uh, we continue to add to that. Um, Tri-Faith Initiative also does do a, a decent amount of um, resource creation and uh, opportunities for kids to visit the commons. So right now we have, uh, have in-person tours that are intended for our younger audience. Um, and actually we're in process of uh, connecting some of our kid-oriented uh, education to social studies standards and other state standards in particular with Nebraska, but um, I think a lot of those standards have overlap in other states as well. So that is something that we'd like to expand on in the future, um, although it is in an early stage. And we, we have also had a Tri-Faith Kids group of from early on with the Tri-Faith Initiative Connections, you know, uh, where the kids would meet, you know, from the different uh, Tri-Faith partners. And that's our Tri-Faith Kids Library was meant for that group to have books right there that they could read about the different holidays that, uh, that like you mentioned, and, and otherwise learn about each other and just be together and play and be kids and have a friend. Thank you for your question, Vicki. Uh, I hope that was uh, informative to you. Um, and of course, the Tri-Faith team um, has told me to say that they're, they're more than happy to answer any further questions that you have after the program is over. And I know that Edward has been patiently waiting. Edward, would you like to unmute yourself and say your question? I was wondering whether um, uh, they're accepting uh, book donations uh, is there a group that reviews uh, book titles to see if they are appropriate for donations? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the Tri-Faith Library Project team would, you know, would consider ourselves honored to help with that. And I think each individual uh, building would be, uh, you know, I'm sure, you know, they have whatever space they have for their books, you know, and whatever their collection is and whatever they want it to be. What they'd have is we all have autonomous libraries, um, so they could they would everyone would be able to select what books they want for their own library. Um, you know, book donations are always a challenge. When we came in here, there were there were rolling carts full of packed high with books, and we had to figure out what to do. It's, it's it's very challenging, but we really respect people who want to give donations. You know, if they're good, clean books, we could, you know. We will, I think we need another, I think we have a policy for book donations, but I, th I think it's like, like Shelley said, all library work is a work in progress. So I think to be able to accept any, for any one of our buildings to accept an entire collection from someone would be challenging because there's limited space. So uh, I think we would do the best to show the respect for the generous offer of books and then we'd have to figure out what you know for each autonomous group what are the kinds of books that they want represented and tri-faith initiative building cannot accept a large library they have to be so many different things at the same time that um they they need a fluid way of being not walls of bookshelves so um but I, does that answer your question a, a little tentatively, but I, I think we are delighted with people having a wonderful collection, like I'm sure yours would be, 
you know, if they have something that they thought would be meaningful to teach something about a personal religion to the other partners. Right. Well, thank you. <laughs> and uh, Jeremy did say in the chat for those, um, let's see, you can certainly send a list of your books to Lee and we can help connect these do those donations to the right place. Uh, because even if it isn't suitable for or doesn't fit in with the space requirements and with what uh, the different congregations are looking for, that doesn't mean that another uh, place would not have that. Uh, the most important thing is not to just speaking from personal experience here as a librarian at my synagogue, the important thing is not to leave everything there and then call the librarian and say, oh, I just left 300 books uh, in uh, at, <laughs> at your synagogue and uh, you know, I hope you like them. Don't do that. <laughs> so, um, and I see, um, let's see, uh, Cindy, in the chat says, for those of us far away, I am trying to visualize how to make the most of the two libraries. Can you spell that out? Cindy, what did you mean about the most of the two libraries, how to make the most of it? Um, um, just a sec. Okay, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm not hearing you. So anyway, I was, I meant, is it a question, is it a, by two libraries, I meant the Tri-Faith and the Temple Israel, but maybe I conceptualized that wrong, but my main question is how to connect and get as much benefit as possible, even though I'm usually not in Omaha and some of it may be technical and knowing how to download and finding out what's downloadable. But I don't know if there are, you know, there are activities to be on a certain mailing list. I don't know how everything functions in, like I said, in order to get the most benefit, even though I can't walk in. Yeah, I, th I think some of the things that since you're far away, it tells me a need that perhaps we need to have some kind of, you know, with Temple Israel's uh, Temple Tidings and with Trifaith, they have a wonderful website with all sorts of information. I think for a while there, when we were had were beginning the Temple Israel or the Trifaith library, we would you know, talk to each other and each of us offer different book recommendations of books that we loved you know, at the uh, Tri-Faith website. Um, I think what I would appreciate from you and others who have similar um, concerns and interests would be to, you know, maybe we can have you, if you don't mind writing down your thoughts in the chat and we can, hopefully somebody can keep these mm -hmm. suggestions and we can follow up with, you know, we're, it's all stuff and it's kind of infancy if you think about it, that, you know, even the Tri-Faith Initiatives building just got built recently. Um, so, but we're open and we wanna do the best we can for all people who are interested. And I have to say with my book club, as an interfaith book club, reading about different religions has been one of the most rewarding parts of my life to uh, learn so much about different religions. And that's the story of Tri-Faith. And perhaps, you know, to share a book list of things like that, since you can't really come here when you're far away for a library, but if you had some very, very good recommendations, the names of these five-star books, you know, and something is gonna hit you as the, you, you need to do this. And maybe you can share it with a friend or start your own interfaith book club, you know, if this intrigues you. And Cindy, you've got my email in case you wanna have any further um, questions um, for Lee or your thoughts, uh, if you don't wanna put it in the chat. I see that, thank you, Cindy. Um, I see that Hope has her hand raised. Hope, you could unmute yourself. <laughs> Hi, Hope, can you unmute yourself? Yes, yes, yes. sorry. <laughs> I'm Hope and Andy from Massachusetts. And uh, I think this is a fabulous uh, thing that you're That's doing and wonderful. a great job. I'm curious about funding. How are you funding this project? You know, 
you know, Tri Faith Initiative, if I may be so bold to say, is always requesting donations. I, I think we're working on, we're going to be working on their five star book collection and perhaps put it uh, as part of a, you know, a wish list at something like Amazon. So people could donate a book to Tri Faith to, in someone's honor. Um, so to get some of these books. Uh, their funding is, you know, more challenging than some, like a big institution like Temple Israel. And we, Temple Israel has a, a good annual budget for its library. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that everyone does. So funding is, I'm sure, a, a big and serious thing to be concerned about. And um, I don't know of any place that doesn't welcome donations. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> that could be a good thing. I don't know if you want to address anything like this, uh, Jeremy. Sure. Sure. Just really quick. I mean, we, um, so much of what we gain from the libraries is, is from volunteer hours and from donations um, at the Tri-Faith Center. Um, but it is also just like many of the, the projects on the Tri-Faith Commons, um, there's kind of a, a balance between teamwork and autonomy. So each of these libraries are in full control of their own libraries, right? There's, there's basically four libraries in a sense on the commons. Um, and the, the amount of money is not anywhere near as big as the time commitment uh, to be able to make sure that it is a collaborative effort. You know, that is, that is mostly people's time and intention, right? You know, and people, I have to say, speaking personally, and I think for other people I know here, we love Tri-Faith, <laughs> you know, so whatever, you know, we can do for Tri-Faith, and we also, we're here in our own places of worship, and we love our places too, you know, and if we have the time, there are people here who are willing to do the work, uh, you know, the Tri-Faith Garden has given well over a ton of vegetables to the local food banks, that's what they're doing. And they have Tri-Faith members um, doing the volunteer work there. Like Jeremy said, the best donation is the volunteer work. The Tri-Faith Library Project Team has had wonderful dedicated people, Debbie, Ducky, Abdul, Natasha, Teresa, Robin, Kathy, who has been amazing, Allie and Jeremy, of course, uh, terrific Tri-Faith people. Um, you know, if you don't have people working together as volunteers when money can be an issue, then, you know, it's much, much harder. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes there's benefactors who can give a larger donation to something and that really helps a lot. Sometimes there's wish lists here and there and that helps a lot of when people do give. And don't forget that in your own community too. Pe people in your organizations need that as well, but we wouldn't refuse any help. <laughs> so thank you for the question. Thank and you. I'll also, uh, related to that, many synagogues have um, celebratory or memorial uh, giving, uh, birthday book clubs, things like that, where in honor of somebody or in memory of somebody, uh, they can donate money or actually choose a book. That's what I did in my library. I actually bought the books, so I knew that they were ones that we needed. Um, I'm just thinking, you, uh, Lee, you just mentioned The Garden. There are some wonderful books about um, Judaism and environmental and gardens and, of course, kids' books and things like that. And the, ch the child or the adult, they go and they, they buy the book. Uh, and then you put a donation plate and you give them a certificate. There's all kinds of ways in which um, rather than actual money, you give them an investment uh, in the library themselves. And that can be exciting, very exciting for people as well. So, uh, because yes, funding is always, it's a perennial, a perennial problem. That's so true. Um, okay, did anybody else have their hand raised that I missed? Um, let's see, uh, let's see. And I know Cindy's got some comments there in the chat. I, uh, I wanted to say, I, I said that, uh, that Tri-Faith is an award-winning organization. I neglected to say that the, um, the URJ, the Union for Reform Judaism, 
uh, in December of 2019, uh, did give an award to TriFaith. Uh, I can't remember the exact name of the award, um, but I have a question in terms of um, how much uh, how, how much interaction do you have with say other uh, synagogues, maybe since it became more well publicized, or even the Christian and Muslim? I know I, I know Abdul told me that the the mask is, and you just said it's it's in process, it's in progress. Um, so is any of that going on uh, beyond? Uh, your campus? Well, you know, there's an, a thriving Jewish community here in Omaha, and we have Beit Midrash uh, teachings on Wednesday nights. Um, I think I think sometimes some things like um, how many things can different people do? I think that we could welcome a group, uh, you know, the Jewish community to attend something that they might be inclined to attend and so they can experience the amazing thing that is tri-faith. I mean, in the next three weekends, I think I'm probably wrong on the dates, Jeremy, but there's a taste of tri-faith where people can come to Temple Israel and come to services, experience that, and then have lunch together. And then the next one will be, you know, then the countryside community church is also doing that, a taste of tri-faith there. And so is AMI. And if you remember that video, the beautiful video with the people getting together with people from different faiths, it's one of the most amazing experiences to go there and sit with somebody you don't know and learn and just develop friendships. It's just an incredible gift. You know, And there's opportunities like that. And I'll tell you when we have big events, picnics in the back or whatever, people from Omaha come, you know, whether they're tri-faith connected or not. People can sign up for TriFaith, get the information and know about the programming. And, you know, it's, it's Omaha, you know, you can't hold it back and you got to welcome. That's the point, isn't it? And Beit Midrash, which you recommended, actually has the um, Jewish community, whether reform, uh, Chabad, whatever it might be, getting together on Wednesdays. And That's right. that itself is like tri-faith, but for the Jewish community, which is wonderful. Well, um, I am so happy that you agreed to present to us. Uh, we've all learned a lot, including me. I haven't been there since the autumn and I've learned a lot about how far you've come, uh, both uh, tri-faith and the library. Um, this presentation is recorded. Uh, the PowerPoint was put together uh, by the TriFaith team um, and uh, the JLNMC technology advisor, Eric Geist of Geist Creative uh, was used as a consultant on that as well. Um, it's spring out there and the fact that you came here to um, learn about this amazing organization, uh, it's very much appreciated. Um, the 2022-23 year will have more great presentations by JLNMC. If you have any ideas for us, let us know. Um, and we welcome your support. We were just talking about support of JLNMC programming. We invite you to become a member. Uh, it's only $18 a year um, or a member of uh, the Association of Jewish Libraries, which has via Zoom so many great uh, authors and other programming going on. Um, if you have any uh, comments, further comments, questions, whatever, uh, on the flyer that I sent out, it, it's a, my contact information. And of course, I can get that to Lee or to Jeremy uh, and the TriFaith team. Um, and I, again, I just want to thank everybody. And I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank